Idalia definitely has shown herself on the horizon. She is coming and she is rapidly developing. And I will say she is not abiding by the rules. As you can see over my shoulder, things are changing and it's a very dynamic situation. I'm gonna waste no time. This is the intro. Welcome to Weather Center Nazario. Let's figure this stuff out quick. preemptively warn all of you tuning in today that if you look forward to my lovely introductions, that is not going to be the case today. I really want to take a deep dive into everything that's been unfolding. We're going to stay out of model land. We're staying away from the model realm. I want to talk analysis. I want to talk real-time data because that has been our best friend over the last 8 to 12 hours as this system has really broken all the rules. All the anticipation that we've had building up to this moment has completely changed and it is going to continue to dynamically evolve as we go through the rest of the weekend and especially into next week. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Tropical Depression 10 as of 4 p.m. This is the first advisory winds, approximately 30 miles an hour. Movement is stationary. I've seen some conflicting reports mentioning that this system is tracking off to the north between 5 to 10 miles per hour. I can definitely tell you after sitting here mesmerized by visible satellite, which we're going to get to here in a moment, I promise you that, after scrutinizing and really interpreting the visible satellite doing some streamlining to try to identify a center of circulation, it is not moving. I started looking at the clock at between 9.45, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is 5.12 p.m. and I can confirm she has not moved. She is parked. She's pulled the e-brake. She is hard parked. For those of you car enthusiasts out there who know the terminology, she is not moving. She's situated between the Yucatan and Cuba and just spinning. And I mean spinning. Let's switch on over to Weather Nerds to get a good look at her and take a look at this wonderful storm. We're seeing a little bit of waning in the thunderstorm activity closest to its center of circulation, but, you know... For what it is, for what we were anticipating, and for what all of our main operational models were predicting for the last three, five, seven, the CMC, the last nine to ten days now, this was not what we were looking at. This was definitely far from what the models were interpreting. In fact, I will tell you that a large majority were consistently expecting this system to be here and a very disorganized conglomeration of precip with no discernible center, with no deepening or any kind of cyclogenesis occurring. It wasn't until the Monday time frame we were going to finally see a semblance of a low situated over the Gulf of Mexico north of the Yucatan, but nope. As you can see in the satellite, she's actually allowing us to take a good look at the center of circulation. You can clearly see an identifiable or an identifiably spinning low pressure center right there. And folks, I am not exaggerating. It has been in that area since this morning. For all intents and purposes, she is stationary. She is not moving. So that begs the question, when is she going to finally take strides to the north or to the northeast? We still have a lot of model discrepancy and a lot of inconsistency in our operational models, in our ensembles, and even the high-res hurricane models. One thing I can tell you that is very concerning is the high-res models have definitely shifted from first all the way to sixth gear, and we went from a tropical depression, tropical storm, low-grade hurricane, to immediately into a low-grade hurricane and a potential major hurricane as she approaches landfall. That is the main reason we're not going to spend too much time in this episode of Weather Center Nazario. I simply want to communicate how this situation has been unfolding and unraveling because I can tell you now the models didn't see this coming and it is going to be a case of we need to rely on real-time data at least for the next 24 hours at least until we begin to see what the new week brings upon us because folks this is looking pretty textbook like a pretty solid tropical depression a healthy breathing weather phenomena organism whatever you want to call it she is definitely doing her thing she definitely has really good outflow beginning to show itself in the upper level clouds. You can see very good cyclonic curvature right there in the visible satellite despite a little bit of that thunderstorm activity beginning to expose a very small quadrant of the northeastern flank. I caught you there, girl. I saw that. There is a little bit of exposure. I can tell you it's not dry air. I've been looking at the water vapor. I've been looking at the charts, the analysis charts, looking at relative humidity and dew points. There is no dry air near to this system. There is no shear. There isn't a whole lot to interfere with additional cyclogenesis, albeit gradual or fairly modest over the next couple days, especially once we finally begin to see her make her exit dance. All right, 
I'm going to switch over to Weather Prediction Center because this is going to be one of the primary influences we see tracking across the central parts of the United States working their way down to the southeast quadrant of CONUS. This is what's going to drive our system. We are looking at this frontal boundary draped across the Gulf Coast states headed towards the Gulf of Mexico. This is like clockwork, folks. Typically, whenever we get a Western Caribbean system or a Gulf of Mexico system, we see some sort of a frontal system coming down out of the United States that may potentially jog her off to the east. I want us to watch closely as that boundary goes stationary and continues to somewhat linger over that area of interest before we finally see it begin to frontalicize as it moves into Florida. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, this is going to be a huge wait-and-see kind of game. The models are not on our side yet. Perhaps now that we have an identifiable center of circulation, we will start to see a bit more accurate consensus in terms of what the intensity and what the forward progress is going to look like. But I can tell you right now, at least between now and this time tomorrow, it's going to be a waiting game. We're all just going to have to pitch a tent, grab our sleeping bags, huddle up and sing some kumbaya because she is not going to move. She's going to be stubborn. It's kind of like the Western Front. Everyone's digging their heels in. We're going to sit in the trenches together, and we're just going to kind of wait. We're going to wait and see who makes the first move. We're going to go on to tropical tidbits real quick. I just want to take a look at the water vapor imagery just to give you guys a bit more of a big picture weather pattern. Whoops, that's Hurricane Franklin, which, by the way, if we want to talk model data and give you an idea of exactly how much the models have been missing the mark with all of our systems, even the Euro, the GFS, the CMC, the Icon, all of them have been missing the mark. Franklin is now a Cat 1 hurricane, and you can see a really pronounced eye trying to unveil itself as he continues to deepen, headed off to the north-northwest. I can tell you right now, I did a quick little initialization of the GFS, the CMC, and the Euro once the 12 Zulu data came out, and I can tell you that that 982 central pressure was missed almost by a mile with all of our operational runs. All the models are underestimating the intensity of these systems. All of them are. And that's what leads me to believe that we are still playing a game of catch-up with not only potential Idalia this time tonight, if not tomorrow, but also with the rest of the tropics for that matter as well. So that's what leads me to believe we're really going to have to deep dive into our analysis data. The analysis is going to be crucial. As you can see here at 12 Zulu, these are the European ensembles. I'm going to show you that real large margin of error as we go forward in time. You can see there is model agreement. I'm going to use air quotes. Model agreement that some part of Florida is going to be hit. Regardless, at this point, it's becoming more and more safe to say that Florida is under the gun regardless of what the system decides to do. How fast this system kicks off to the east remains to be seen. How far of a northward path we're going to get out of her remains to be seen. Again, we're in that holding pattern. We're kind of just circulating just as she is. We're waiting to see. We're waiting to see. There's a lot of influences in play. One small area that I'd like to mention, and I'm going to go over to some model data just so I can describe what it is that I'm looking looking at. It has to do with Hurricane Franklin, because if the models are misinterpreting his level of intensity, how much he's going to deepen, I have a gut feeling that we could see just a little bit of additional influence from him as he continues to eject off to the north and north-northwest. Okay, so here we go. This is 78 hours from now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to rewind just to show you a little bit of that initialization I was talking about. So this is 57 hours, 54 hours, 51 hours, 48 hours. It's two days from now as we get into the new week. There we are now. This is about 39 hours into the future where the euro is finally accommodating for what his central pressure is calculated to be based on reconnaissance aircraft running through that system on a regular basis. Let's go back to about now, our cardinal hour. And as you can see... We're approaching 5.30, so it's just before the 0Z time frame. We'll go ahead and kind of call it halvesies between 21 and 0Z. Look at that central pressure depicted by the European model. Yes, the Euro. 991 millibars. That is a huge discrepancy. Doesn't seem like much when it comes to air pressure, especially with, you know, comparing apples to oranges. But in this case, when dealing with tropical systems, especially those forecast to become major like Franklin is as he continues to work his way closer to the Bermuda Island, that's huge. And what I unfortunately think could happen, I'm not selling it just yet. This is just my, you know, my intuition serving me. But as he continues to work his way off to the north, northwest and deepen probably a little more rapidly than we're anticipating right now. And as Adalia churns between the Yucatan and Cuba, the front's coming down. 
I feel as we get some high pressure building in here, and I know I'm drawing a whole lot, folks. Just roll with me, please. As we get a ridge, a high pressure forming up in the wake of Franklin, I feel like this is going to help instigate a bit more of an eastward bias. Take that with a grain of salt. I'm not actually analyzing that a Central Florida impact is what we're going to be seeing. I just think we're going to see a bit more of a nudge as he disrupts the environmental flow that's steering Adalia towards the Florida panhandle. I think we are going to see a bit more eastward movement, especially if she does organize and deepen into a fairly intense hurricane. As, as we know, the stronger the system, the less, the less it takes to really influence its track either direction. Ian was a primary example predicting a big bend tampa florida impact pretty much the duration of its lifespan i was anticipating here in central florida i would see the eye either come over top or to the north and he ended up passing much further to the south that's how far east he decided to hike towards the last second so it's anybody's guess we're gonna have to really dig deep into our analysis and real-time data as it continues to come in and then begin to cross-reference what our models start to think as they hopefully catch up now that we have something on the map with all that being said, I'm going to start wrapping up this episode. I wanted to update you and let you know that the models are running a little bit funky. They're a little bit haywire. Idalia is not playing by the rules. She's going very heavily and painfully against the grain, doing her own thing at this point. Mother Nature doesn't play by the rules, guys. I'm going to say it again and again on this channel. We try to put Mother Nature, we try to put the atmosphere in a box. And it's just not going to work. It's always going to find a way to demonstrate a new level of resiliency and throw something new at us. And right now we're seeing another one of those curveballs coming straight for us. Whether or not we're going to intercept it, whether or not we're going to make the hit, the grand slam, that is to be determined. Let's go ahead and start concluding this episode, guys. Folks, that'll just about wrap up this iteration of Weather Center Nazario. This is the conclusion of episode 11. There has been a series of events that have unfolded since this morning up until this point, and things are rapidly evolving and are going to continue to do so. Lots of margin of error in this storm to include the intensity, the track, how long is it going to stall, where is it going to go, when is it going to get moving. There's so many variables and moving pieces throughout this entire environmental mechanism, this environmental or atmospheric jigsaw puzzle. So folks, please, I'm going to remind you, hit that notification bell. There's a lot of upcoming content and there's a lot of careful analysis that I and a few other fellow weather YouTubers and meteorologists are going to do and take a deep dive into this storm to really project out exactly who's going to feel the most of the effects once she finally gets underway. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode and a potential new update as things continue to change. But until then, guys, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.